Right now, AMD is having a promotion where you can pick up a new Ryzen processor very cheap. This promotion is currently running exclusive on Amazon, but I do think these prices are available on Newegg as well. What's cool about this current promotion, except for the price cut, is the fact that AMD also includes a 3 months Xbox Game Pass subscription with selected models. And currently, AMD has discounts on pretty much the whole Ryzen 3000 lineup. And right now, you can currently pick up the Ryzen 9 3900X for $449, and this is $50 lower than its MSRP of $499. The popular Ryzen 7 3700X, which is an 8 core 16 thread ship, right now, this is selling for $304, which is a $25 discount from its $329 MSRP. And AMD is doing a price cut on every uh, CPU in the 3000 lineup. And because of this rather sweet promotion going on right now, I wanted to give you guys a easy to navigate guide to which uh, CPU might be the best choice for you in case you are in the hunt for a new one right now. And I decided to run benchmarks on four of the most popular Ryzen models, including the 3600, the 3600X, the 3700X, and the 12 core beast, the 3900X. Now, to make this whole benchmark more interesting and to give you guys a better idea how AMD stand versus Intel, I also decided to include benchmark figures for one of Intel's current best performing CPUs for gaming, the Core i9 9900K. And in case you want to jump over to the benchmark right away, you find the timestamp for that down in the video description. In case you're interested in any of these processors, you find the links to each processor listed down in the video description. Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Robin. Welcome to Arbin Hardware. I'm your Swedish host and friend with bad posture and poor accent. But before we look at how each processor performs in game, let's just quickly have a look at what Ryzen 3000 and the Santo architecture actually brings in terms of features and high PC. All right, so with Sun 2, AMD has been able to fix the obvious shortcomings in Sun, and they also shrunk the design to TSMC's 7 nanometer technology for better energy efficiency and higher clock frequencies. And at the same time, AMD is testing a whole new way of building processors, a so-called chiplet design, where some less performing critical parts are manufactured on an older manufacturing technology. And there is no longer any lack of confidence in AMD. And for the first time in over a decade, AMD is finally able to compete with Intel in the performance uh, segment. And with Sun 2 and Ryzen 3000, AMD goes even beyond that, and they are promising even better energy efficiency than Intel. And in terms of energy efficiency, Intel has actually had this trophy since the introduction of Core 2 in 2006. But Sun 2 goes even beyond that. AMD is actually the first to introduce 7 nanometer. And here's a funny part in the story. AMD didn't actually expect to get higher clock frequencies and they initially thought of a decline and the goal was therefore early on to focus on higher performance at a given clock frequency. You know the number of instructions per core cycle or IPC. And according to AMD the internal goal for Sun 2 was to reach 8 to 9% higher IPC but in the end they actually landed at 15% better performance and according to Mike Clark this was achieved by picking all the low hanging fruits in Sun and eliminating all obvious bottlenecks in the design and expanding existing features. But with AMD's new shiplet design came a few more challenges. Moving out the memory controls to a separate circuit gives higher memory latencies than if it would have sat in the same piece of silicon. But despite all this, AMD still somehow managed to improve the memory latencies with Sun 2, which is pretty, pretty amazing if you think about it. Now that you have a somewhat better idea how this awesome Sun 2 architecture operates, Let's have a look at the most popular models AMD currently offers. Alright, so the 3600 and the 3600X are both part of the Ryzen 5 family. And this is the middle class in the Ryzen 3000 family. Both models are equipped with 6 cores with multi-threading or SMD enabled, resulting in a total of 12 threads. The Ryzen 5 3600X has a base frequency of 3.8, while the turbo frequency goes up to 4.4 depending on various values such as temperature, and voltage, and this includes a TDP value of 95 watts, which is why the company includes the Wrath Spire cooler here, which is considered to be pretty good for being a stock CPU cooler. Now, the simpler model, the Ryzen 5 3600, has a base frequency of 3.6 GHz and a turbo frequency of 4.2. The TDP value is also lower at 65 watts, and the processor does not need as much cooling as the bigger brother, the 3600, and for that reason, the Ryzen 5 3600 comes box 
boxed with the Wrath Stealth instead. And even though this is a simpler cooler, it is still considered to be pretty good for being a stock cooler. And now in case you are looking beyond 6 cores, the 3700 is the most popular Ryzen processor in the high-end space. And this is seen by AMD as the sweet spot in the 3000 series. The 3700 has a frequency range between 3.6 GHz and 4.4 with the Wrath Prism cooler included. And this model goes up against Intel Core i7. And right now you can pick this up for $304. Alright, last up we got the Ryzen 9 3900X. This one has the highest specified turbo frequency up to 4.6 GHz. And under the hood we find 12 cores and 24 threads. as a TDP of 105 watts. And this model goes right up against Intel's flagship, the Core i9 9900K. And currently you can pick this up for $449 US dollars. And with that said, let's have a look at how each processor holds up. First up, we got Fire Strike, and as we can see, the Ryzen 5 3600X and the 3600 lands just below their bigger brothers with higher core counts. Now, despite that, there is not a huge difference in their overall score, but as can be seen, the 6 core Ryzen 5 can't really keep up with the bigger brothers when it comes to physics score. Now, for the gaming test, there are mixed results between the models where some titles do not really see a direct performance difference between the Ryzen 5 3600X and the 3600. At the same time, there are big differences in Division 2, for example, where the Ryzen 5 3600X takes a big step up from its little brother, the Ryzen 5 3600. Only main difference, and the only main difference between the Ryzen 5 3600 and the 3600, and the sort of main difference between the Ryzen 5 3600X and the 3600 is higher clock frequency for the former, and in pure numbers, it is about a 200 megahertz difference here, which in all honesty doesn't really make a huge difference in most cases as can be seen here. And so if you have a budget of around 170 or 80 dollars, my obvious choice would be the 3600. And only if you have about 20 dollars to spare, I would pick the 3600X. And when it comes to which processor to pick, this is usually what I tell people asking me which model they should choose. Alright, so let's start with the Ryzen 5. The only disadvantage with Ryzen 5 5 or in fact any Ryzen CPU in the 3000 series is the fact that the possibilities for overclocking are very limited and if you decide to do some overclocking this can actually result in some performance loss and this is obviously very disappointing so with that in mind if you are aiming for the middle class the 3600 is a really good option if you got $20 more to spend or spare yes I would then suggest the 3600X as overclocking uh, is not really an option and finally the 3600 is a really good choice for its price point and it is good enough for today's requirements and even requirements for games releasing in the near future as well. Now even the Edge Core Ryzen 3700X can be a fantastic option if you're seeking you know more performance beyond Ryzen 5. It takes a striking step from its predecessor the Ryzen 7 2700X in performance both in terms of multi-threaded and single threaded loads. And again this one is currently selling for $300 and this model is sitting in an extremely interesting position between the Core i7 9700K and the Core i5 9600K. Two models that feels considerably less interesting for various reasons. And again, the only drawback with the Ryzen 7 3700X is the lack of overclocking. And overall, this is an excellent processor and the 3700 should be on anyone's shortlist who is interested to build a new system in the near future as a budget to spend a little bit more but if only the best is good enough then the 3900x should be your first pick now in short this is an extremely impressive processor with 12 cores and 24 threads and this is a true monster in multi-threaded workloads and in many cases the 3900x actually outbeats the company's 16 core thread ripper which is just mind-blowing now initially amd was selling this with the same recommended price tag as the core i9 9900k but right now you can pick this up for 449 us dollars which is just insane and
and generally speaking this processor offers significantly more power under the hood due to its increased core count the improved architecture and relatively high clock frequencies also allow the model to do excellent in single threaded loads as well as in games although it should be said intel still has a minor overtake when it comes to you know general gaming uh, performance but in the end the AMD ryzen 3000 series is one of the best consumer processors you can buy right now and regardless which model you end up picking ryzen 3000 offers excellent balance between performance energy efficiency and price and again you find all processor mentioned down in the video description now, in case you have any questions please let me know now watch either of these two videos and i will catch you in the next video and last but definitely not least have an awesome day all right